Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. Father Charles Murr is here. He's giving us a riveting story about Freemasonry and the infiltration into the Catholic Church. Father, there's so much. I know we only have two more segments, but do you think that uh, it would be good to talk a little bit, and you, you make the call, about how Cardinal Gagnon, and what, what was his response, where he went, and then what happened when he came back? I, it, that, to me, was very interesting. You make the call. Pope Paul VI died. Yes, in August of 78, conclave. right. August, August 6, 1978. Yep. There's a conclave. Yep. The conclave elected Pope John Paul I. Yeah, this is fascinating. In the, book, in the, in the book, I explain how this happened. It's enough, it's enough for people to understand the following. Yes. In, the, in that conclave to elect the successor yeah. of, 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 of uh, Paul VI, were three contenders. One was Cardinal Siri, Giuseppe Siri yeah. of Genoa. Yeah. The other was Benelli, Cardinal Benelli. He was now made a cardinal uh, by Paul VI and, and uh, Archbishop of Florence. The Benelli who was under Secretary of State is now Cardinal Benelli. Yes. And, and the third candidate was Sebastian Baggio. Right. Cardinal Sebastian Baggio. Why was he a contender? Because he had been creating all of the bishops in the world for years. He also named all of the archbishops in places that would make them cardinals. Wow. New York, Washington. Yes, big cities. Uh, Mexico City. Mm -hmm. When these people came, and especially foreigners, non-Italians, to Rome, the only person they really knew, or one of the people they, they, they knew best, was Cardinal Baggio, who had made them archbishops and then cardinals. Got it. Consequently. So he had support. Mm -hmm. Cardinal Staffa, God bless him, the, the uh, head of the Supreme Court said he prayed, he prayed that God would spare him from a conclave where Baggio would be elected. He said it would be impossible for me to bend down and kiss the hand, the ring of the fisherman, <laughs> the, first, the first Freemason yeah. fisherman. Yeah, and, really. Anyway, so we've got we've got the election. It came down to this. It came down to a stalemate between Siri, Cardinal Siri, and Cardinal Benelli. And Baggio was picking up independence and he was gaining support. Benelli to cease the whole, to stop the whole thing and to prevent a catastrophe, pulled a rabbit out of his hat. And that rabbit was Luciani, Albino Luciani of Venice. He became Pope. He was a, he was a great candidate. Everyone loved him. He was a good man. Yes. And he, he won the election. He became John Paul I. John Paul I, John Paul I named privately named Giovanni Benelli as his secretary of state. Right. Said, you leave Florence and you come here and help me with this. They were going to make a team. Uh, a lot of your viewers know, know these people, uh, I'll mention them, uh, of Pius X and Cardinal Ralph Meri del Val. Mm -hmm. All right. Pius X was a farmer. Yep. He, farmer still, he, still, he still had dirt under his fingernail, mm -hmm. Pius X. But he got as his secretary of state one of the one of the most intelligent men in the world, Ralph Merivelval, and between the, the two of them, they cleaned house mm. and they made the church strong and central again, and safe and Catholic. Anyway, uh, it was all set up. So you had John Paul I, and he had asked Benelli to become his secretary of state, and Benelli said, "I accept." One exception. With, under one condition, you get rid of Cardinal Baggio immediately from the Congregation for Bishops. Mm -hmm. And as the man is corrupting the church by making bishops yes. who, are, who are not healthy, they're not good men. Right. Not, not all of them, okay? I'm, excuse me, I'm not saying all of them, mm -hmm. but a great number of them were. Sure. And, and all of them were liberals. Yeah. All of them were liberals. Anyone who got through who was not a liberal got through by accident, <laughs> right? I'll put it that way. That's fine. So the, the Pope, the new Pope said to, 
to Cardinal Benelli, well, you take care of getting rid of Baggio from the congregation. Do you remember Paul, John Paul I? He was a very shy man, very timid. Loveless he was. Smiling he was a great smile, yeah. great smile. But he's not the kind of guy to take the bull by the horns. No, no. And, and, right? Yeah. Not it. He said to Benelli, and Benelli said, no, you do it. Set the tone for your pontificate. You do it. He said, before you do that, I want you to talk to Archbishop Edward Gagnon and listen to his report. It's a three-year investigation of the Vatican before you do, before day one. Amen. Listen to what he's saying. Listen to what he's saying. Sure. So yeah. again, Gagnon asked me to take me and take him to the Vatican. Oh, no, not another to one. See, to, see the sec, to see the second pope. <laughs> I drove him. I drove him. He went up, had an audience with him. A, a, the audience was a long audience. He came down without the documents. He left the documents with the Pope of his, of his study. And Gagnon was elated, absolutely elated. He said, finally, <laughs> finally, finally, we're, get, we're getting someplace. And he said the Pope was very receptive, took notes, knew what he was going to do. I presented him all of the documentation. He knows now about the Vatican Bank. He's, he's aware of that. He knows about Cardinal Baggio. He knows about Bunini. He knows all of these things. We're very well prepared. Fine. The Pope then had to deal with getting rid of Cardinal Baggio from the Congregation of Bishops. He called. Imagine this scenario. I'm listening. The Pope, the Pope of Rome calls you on the phone and says to you, Your Eminence, Cardinal Baggio, I'd like to see you oh, boy. For, a meeting, for a meeting. Sure. And Baggio, Baggio had the audacity to tell the Pope, I'm busy. Oh, that's, that tells it all. <laughs> you don't tell the Pope you're busy. I'm, I'm, especially, especially a cardinal who works for the Pope. Yeah, you this think? Is your boss. Yeah, exactly. It's unbelievable. I'm busy. And the Pope very accommodating said, well, Perhaps this afternoon we could meet. This afternoon, would that be all right? He said, busy this afternoon. He said, then after hours, after hours, I'll see you here after hours. Wow. Baggio arrived at eight o'clock at night. This is unheard of. The pop popes don't have audiences at eight o'clock at night, right? At eight o'clock at night, alone, he walked into the, to the, to the Vatican, to the papal residence, he was, he was expected, walked in, sat down with the Pope, and the Pope actually, I just got done explaining what they got, what they did with Bunini. Sure. You promote, you promote to eliminate. Right. They sent him to Iran, right? Right. He said, I'm going to promote you to Venice. Hmm. I want you to be the Archbishop Cardinal of Venice. Venice is empty. The sea is empty. Why is it empty? Because I was the Archbishop exactly. of Venice. I was elected Pope. It's free. I want you to take it. And he's saying, he, he's saying without saying, said, isn't that a wonderful thing? You're going to, you're not only going to be in Venice, you're going to take the Pope's place. Yes. You're filling my shoes. Up. Great. Baggio absolutely refused. Wow. Absolutely refused. I'm not leaving Rome. I'm not leaving Rome. And you can't make me and this. Other. Who knew? Who, know, who knows what, what he said? Certainly, uh, there was some sort of blackmail and some sort of yeah. some sort of shenanigans. What there was that we know of was screaming and yelling. This was not a conversation of between uh, two two men who were who were using reason. The Pope wasn't yelling. Baja was yelling. How do we know that? The two Swiss guards standing outside the door. Sure. Yeah. Right? This went on for an hour, this meeting. Wow. It left with Baggio. Baggio left, slamming the door behind him. And two hours later, the Pope had a heart attack and died. Yeah, very suspicious. Let's just be honest. Come on. But the last person to see him alive was Cardinal Baggio. Wow. Baggio denied it. D d denied it practically the next day when he was dead they asked Baggio what is a, 
his reaction to the death of the Pope, all of the other people were saying, oh, that's, he said, I can't, everyone was saying, I can't believe it. I just met with him last week. He was in the best of health, great cheer, yeah. this, that, and the other thing. But Baggio, who was the last person to see him alive, all he said was, que colpo. What a shock. What a blow. <laughs> that's all. Kept walking. Unbelievable. Right? Anyway. So now we've got a next, we've got another conclave. Yeah. The same situation happened again. And the same Cardinal Benelli pulled another rabbit out of his hat. And that man's name was Wojtyla. Yeah. Carl Wojtyla. The same thing happened. And it was Benelli who proposed Wojtyla. Wow. He won, as we know, that's John Paul II. John Paul II had a meeting with Benelli immediately. And Benelli said, you've got to get rid of Baggio. You've, got, you've gotten rid of, uh, it, it was taken care of for you already, uh, Bonini, he's in Iran. Yeah. Huh? And you've got to deal with the Vatican Bank immediately. And he, Benelli said, as a diplomat and a politician and a statesman, Benelli was. Hmm. He was also, he was, he was a sharp man. Yeah. He said, do not reappoint everyone in the same position in your in your cabinet. Yeah. Put in people you trust. Amen. And clean house. Yes. And clean house. 